On the evening of January 3rd, something quietly monumental happened. Not in a NASA control room or the cold depths of a million-dollar observatory, but in a suburban backyard in Arizona. Under a clear sky, Ray Coulson, a hobbyist with a steady hand and a well-maintained Dwarf 3 telescope, decided to capture a frame of the interstellar object known as Three-Eye Atlas. He wasn't trying to make history. He wasn't part of any official agency. He didn't have access to high-orbit optics, infrared spectrometers, or plasma telemetry arrays. What he had was curiosity, a thousand-dollar telescope, and a clean window into the night. Ray knew what he expected to see. For weeks, the comet had been tracked across the sky, catalogued, studied, debated. Every official image so far had shown the same thing, a dusty, blurred structure slowly trailing off into an uneven haze, the kind of image we've come to associate with all comets, smeared by their own sublimation, unpredictable in their shedding, shaped more by chaos than coherence. But Ray's photo didn't look like that. When the data from his exposure finished processing, what appeared on the screen stopped him cold. There, hovering against the black backdrop of deep space, was something that shouldn't exist. Not just because of what it was, but because of how clearly it was captured. At the centre of the frame was a brilliant white fuselage. Not a smudge, not a gas halo. Something sharp. Something with edge definition. Wrapped around it was a soft blue envelope, glowing faintly but cleanly. Not the erratic scattering of dust or light, but something smoother, something layered. And then came the tail. Ray expected the usual, an outflow of dust trailing away from the sun. But instead he saw two directional streams, one arching away as expected, and one pointing back, toward the sun. An anti-tail. Anti-tails have been recorded before, but almost always as visual illusions resulting from Earth's observational angle or scattered dust hanging in orbital planes. But this wasn't illusion. Ray's telescope didn't just capture it. It resolved it. The structure, the angle, the origin point, everything about it suggested that this stream of material was real and it was moving in the wrong direction. He checked the equipment, reprocessed the stack, adjusted the contrast, swapped filters, reviewed the logs, but the image held up. No glitches, no stacking error, no lens flares or software interpolation, just a high-resolution view of an object that didn't seem to behave like a comet at all. By midnight, Ray posted the image online, expecting a handful of replies from fellow amateurs. What he didn't expect was silence, then an explosion of attention. Within 12 hours, his post had spread across astrophotography boards, science forums, even internal channels in research groups. People weren't dismissing it. They were stunned by it. Some skeptics claimed the image was overprocessed. Others said it had to be a post-production mistake, maybe an exposure artifact. But as more images rolled in from other amateurs with similar equipment, the shape kept reappearing. Not perfectly identical, but unmistakably consistent. It was there, not a smear, not a blur. Something focused, something structured. And suddenly a $500 telescope had captured something that billion-dollar observatories had either missed or chosen not to show. Why? That question now hung in the air. Why did a backyard telescope reveal structure, symmetry, and glow, when professional instruments had only shown noise? And if Ray's image was real, then what exactly had we been looking at all along? Because whatever this object was, it wasn't acting like a comet anymore. To understand why Ray's image of Three-Eye Atlas is such a disruption, we need to remind ourselves what comets are supposed to be, what we've always believed them to be. Because the rules of comet, behaviour aren't arbitrary, they come from decades of observation, modelling and repetition. Comets, for all their wildness, follow a script, a dirty snowball, that's the simplest, most accepted definition. Comets are thought to be ancient leftovers, frozen relics from the birth of solar systems. They're made of volatile ices, rock fragments, dust grains, and carbon-rich compounds. They drift quietly through space, inert and undisturbed for most of their existence. But when one begins to approach a star, any star, that quiet ends, the heat of the sun begins to reach it, first slowly, then violently. Solar radiation seeps into the surface layers, and the frozen gases begin to sublimate. That means they skip the liquid phase entirely. They go straight from solid to gas, 
as that gas escapes, it drags dust with it. The coma forms, a glowing cloud of expanding material. Then, driven by solar wind and photon pressure, that gas and dust trail behind, forming a tail. Always behind. Always away from the sun. That tail, in fact, is how we know where the sun is, even if the comet's halfway across the sky. It's a simple rule of physics. Heat causes expansion, and pressure moves that expansion outward, away from the energy source. That's why a comet's tail always points away from the star, no matter where it's going. And that tail isn't subtle. It grows massive, stretching millions of miles. Sometimes ionized, sometimes dusty, but always chaotic, jagged, fragmented, noisy. That's how comets shed material, through irregular jets, bursts, or entire structural ruptures. Because comets aren't built to last. They tumble, they crack, they glow unevenly. Many don't survive perihelion, their closest approach to the sun. They break apart under thermal stress or spin themselves into pieces. Some disappear entirely, reduced to a haze of particles that never recondense. That's what we expect. And those expectations are based on thousands of observed cases, from long-period comets that swoop in once every few centuries to short-period travellers that return every decade. We've catalogued their chemistry, their water-to-carbon ratios, their spin rates, their mass-loss curves. And no matter how exotic the orbit or origin, the patterns remain largely the same. Even the two previous interstellar visitors, Umuamba and Tuai Borisov, fit the broader framework. One tumbled in strange ways but left no tail. The other looked like a standard comet, albeit one with slightly odd composition. Neither rewrote the rulebook. So when 3i Atlas was spotted in mid-2025, scientists expected the usual story just with a bit of added curiosity. Another object from beyond, another comet with quirks, but still, ultimately, a comet. Until the images started to differ. Until Ray's photo, and others like it, revealed not randomness but symmetry. Not blur, but clarity. Not chaotic venting, but defined directional streams. One of. Those streams pointed away from the sun, as expected. But the other pointed straight back at it, and that simple reversal, just one vector, just one stream of material heading toward the energy source, shattered the assumptions built over decades. Because comets don't do that. They can't do that. Not without rewriting the thermodynamics that govern mass loss. So, is this still a comet? Or is it something that only pretends to be? And if it's pretending, then what is it hiding? At first, it was easy to dismiss the anti-tail. It looked like a trick of the light, a faint stream, barely visible, stretching in the opposite direction of everything we've been taught. In comet science, tails are simple. They point away from the sun, driven by solar radiation and the pressure of high-energy particles. The farther a comet moves through the inner solar system, the more pronounced this directional push becomes. But in the images captured of 3i Atlas by Ray, and then later by others around the world, something refused to disappear. Frame after frame, telescope after telescope, the same feature remained. A narrow, defined jet of material pointing directly toward the sun. It wasn't diffuse like the main tail. It wasn't messy. It didn't arc gently across the sky, like dust drifting away on curved trajectories. This was something else. It was straight, focused, coherent. And worst of all, it held its position. Across multiple nights, from slightly different viewing angles, this anti-tail remained visible. Normally, that's all you'd need to dismiss it. Because anti-tails do happen in comet observations, but not like this. They're almost always illusions. In standard cometary physics, what we call an anti-tail is actually an optical projection. Dust released earlier in the comet's orbit flattens into a broad sheet along its orbital plane. When Earth crosses that plane, we momentarily see the sheet edge on. It appears to form a backward tail, one that looks like it points toward the sun, but really doesn't. It's just perspective, an angle, a trick. But that explanation doesn't hold here, because 3 eye Atlas's anti-tail remained visible across different observing geometries. Earth moved, the angle shifted, but the feature stayed. That suggests one terrifying possibility. It wasn't an illusion. It was real. A stream of mass ejected toward the sun, not away from it that would flip our entire model of how comet outgassing works. Because the process of sublimation, the transformation of solid ice to gas under heat, 
only functions in one direction. The sun heats the side of the comet facing it. Gases erupt outward. The resulting jets always push away from the source of heat. That's how tails form. That's why they always point in the same direction. Away. But with Three-Eye Atlas, that direction was reversed. And that reversal wasn't faint or fleeting. It was captured in both visible light and ultraviolet. Bands. In infrared imaging, the heat signature of the anti-tail even appeared marginally stronger than that of the main tail. That means it wasn't just residual dust. It was active. So what would it take to create a sunward jet? It would require something unnatural. A structural feature that controls where mass escapes. A system that doesn't just melt, but channels energy. Something that directs output, like a nozzle, like a thruster. And more disturbingly, something that understands Newton's third law. Because if you expel mass in one direction, you move in the opposite direction. That's basic propulsion. Rockets do it. Ion drives do it. Even sailboats do it with wind. A sunward jet, then, is more than just an oddity. It's a manoeuvre. And if Three-Eye Atlas is manoeuvring, it isn't falling through our system anymore. It's choosing a path. It wasn't just the anti-tail that raised eyebrows. In the days following Ray Coulson's viral image, amateur astronomers and astrophotography enthusiasts around the world began repeating his capture, some with better tracking mounts, others using longer exposure stacking. And what they found wasn't just consistent, it was escalating. Something strange kept appearing in the processed images. A subtle glow, faint but uniform, not random flares or light pollution, not scatter from nearby stars. This glow was wrapping around Three-Eye Atlas like a veil, one with consistent texture and shape. At first, many assumed it was a reflection, but then someone tried something different. They used a polarisation filter. Polarised light behaves differently depending on the angle and material from which it's reflected, most comet dust, being chaotic and porous, scatters light in a diffuse randomised pattern. The reflected signature spreads out unevenly. But what these astronomers began seeing in the data wasn't that. It was directional, tight, aligned. In some cases, the reflected light was coming off Three-Eye Atlas at angles that would only make sense if its surface were compact, possibly even smooth. More processing, more enhancement. Then came the breakthrough. A well-known astrophotographer based in Chile shared a side-by-side -side comparison, polarised versus unfiltered, and the contrast was clear. The object was reflecting light as if it were solid, not granular, not dusty. The glow was concentrated in a narrow band, indicative of specular reflection. In simpler terms, it was shiny. That single word, so innocent in everyday language, became a kind of spark among those paying close attention. Because in astrophysics, shiny is a red flag. Natural cometary materials are dull. Even when ice is exposed, solar radiation quickly roughens it. Dust coats the surface, impacts chip and break any coherence. But this glow, it stayed stable. Stable over time. Stable through motion. Stable even as the object entered variable lighting conditions. What could cause that? One explanation. Offered. Cautiously in early forum discussions was crystallised carbon. Diamond dust, in theory, could reflect like this. But to maintain uniformity across a rotating object at such speed and temperature, it would need to be freshly exposed layer by layer in perfect sync with sunlight. The odds of that happening naturally repeatedly across multiple nights. Low. Another theory suggested the presence of a highly compact regolith crust, a baked outer shell of irradiated dust formed after centuries of cosmic ray bombardment. But again, the surface would need to be flat, uninterrupted, unfractured, not consistent with what we've seen in even the most well-preserved comets. And then someone brought up the possibility of metallic compounds, because if the surface was not just shiny, but conductive, then the reflection pattern starts to resemble something we've only seen in lab simulations of artificial objects. Specular reflection with angular decay. The kind you get from engineered materials. The kind designed to reflect not just incident light, but also energy, efficiently, predictably. Suddenly, the conversation took a turn. What if the glow wasn't just an artifact? What if it was functional? And what if that faint shimmer wrapping around the nucleus wasn't a passive shell, but something more, a coating, a sail, 
a heat shield, something meant to protect or redirect or even react. The idea was met with resistance, of course. Comets don't reflect like that. They don't manage light. They don't exhibit symmetry under polarised filters. But 3i Atlas did. And as that glow remained, night after night, frame after frame, the question shifted from, is this an artefact, to, why does this look deliberate? Because reflection implies surface. Surface implies structure. And structure starts to look like design. Up until this point, everything strange about 3i Atlas could still be pushed into the margins of uncertainty. Unusual optics, rare geometry, exotic composition. All uncomfortable, but survivable, within science. Then came the moment that removed that safety net. As 3i Atlas approached its closest point to the sun, astronomers around the world were watching closely. Not because they expected drama, but because perihelion is where comets reveal their true nature. Heat peaks, stress rises, structure fails. If an object is fragile, this is where it shows. The predictions were clear. Models showed a gradual increase in brightness, followed by asymmetric outgassing. Small deviations in motion were expected. Tiny nudges caused by jets venting unevenly across the surface. That's normal. That's been observed hundreds of times. But that's not what happened. For days leading into perihelion, 3i Atlas behaved with unnatural calm. Its trajectory remained almost mathematically perfect. No wobble. No rotational torque. No sudden flares. It moved as if sealed, insulated from the very forces that should have been tearing it apart. Then... Within a narrow window measured in minutes, everything changed. In multiple independent data streams, from ground-based observatories in Chile and Hawaii to orbital solar monitors, astronomers recorded a sudden spike in brightness. Not a gradual flare, not a plume, a sharp jump, clean, instantaneous. Almost simultaneously, trajectory solutions began to drift. At first, analysts assumed error. Calibration noise, solar glare minor timing offsets, but when the same deviation appeared across unrelated instruments, the conclusion became unavoidable. 3i Atlas had changed course, not dramatically, not violently, but deliberately enough to be measured. The shift was subtle, just enough to move the object off its predicted path. But for an interstellar body moving at enormous speed, even a small deviation implies force, and that force didn't behave like gas-driven thrust. Outgassing produces chaos. Jets flicker. Rotation accelerates. Motion becomes noisy. This wasn't noise. The deviation followed a smooth curve, a rise, a brief plateau, then a clean return to baseline, like a pulse. More troubling still was the direction. The acceleration vector pointed almost perfectly away from the sun. Radial, not tangential. That matters, because random venting doesn't do that. To push directly outward requires either extraordinary coincidence or alignment, and alignment suggests control. As analysts dug deeper, they overlaid the timing of the deviation with solar activity logs. That's when the pattern emerged. A powerful solar flare had erupted just minutes before the trajectory shift. Not hours, not days, minutes. The flare wasn't aimed directly at 3i Atlas but its electromagnetic precursor swept through the region precisely as the object crossed perihelion. Instruments aboard solar probes detected localised compression in the solar wind, a tightening of magnetic field lines, and at that exact moment, through Atlas, reacted. It brightened. It accelerated. Then it stabilised. If this were coincidence, it would be an extraordinary one, because thermal reactions lag. Ice takes time to heat. Gas pressure builds gradually, but this response was immediate, faster than thermal physics allows, which leaves only a few possibilities. Either 3i Atlas possesses surface materials capable of responding directly to electromagnetic change, or something on the object is sensing and reacting in real time. Neither option fits comfortably within comet science. Natural bodies absorb energy passively. They endure. They don't respond. They don't adjust. They don't pulse in sync with stellar behaviour. Yet that is exactly what the data suggests happened. The object didn't just pass the sun, it interacted with it. And once that door opens, once an object shows responsiveness rather than exposure, the entire classification collapses. Because comets don't change trajectory cleanly, they don't A. Answer flares, they don't pulse, 
but on the morning of January 3rd, three Atlas did. 